Assalamu alaikum and good day to all. In this lesson, we will learn a new topic which is loop logic structure. In this topic, we will cover several things which are the introduction to loop logic structure and how we can apply the loop logic structure in PAC which is problem analysis chart, interactivity chart and also input process output and how we can design our loop logic in terms of algorithm flowchart and the last thing how we can evaluate our loop logic structure by using this checking. This topic we learn on how we can develop a solution by using loop logic structure and how we can use a counter and also accumulators in the problem solutions. In this lesson also, we will learn three types of loop logic structure which are while, repeat and automatic counter. What is a loop? A loop is a repeating structure. Or we can say it is a programming language statement which allow code to be repeatedly executed. A loop is classified as an iteration statement. You can find out a lot of examples of a loop problem in the YouTube. From the link given here is one of the examples that you can see in the loop in our daily life. There are two objectives of loop structure which we can accomplish for the counting or we can say it is incrementing or decrementing. The second objective is for the accumulating. What is the differences between counting and accumulating? For the counting, for example, we have a number 1, 2, 3, 4 until end of number. So we can say that it is increment by 1. For the accumulating, for example, we have a total of numbers. Let's say we're going to enter number 10, number 2, number 4. And for the loops here, we're going to calculate the total number of 3 numbers, which is equal to 10 plus 2 plus 4, which is we have the first loop, the second loop, and the third loop. How we can use accounting in the loop structure? So this is one example of counting, which is incrementing. This counting is done by adding a constant, such as 1 or 2, to the value of a variable. For example, we have a one variable, a counter, and then we increment counter by 1. So we have the same counter at the left and the right side in the assignment. And then we have a value of variable counter is incrementing by a constant of value by 1. The counter must be initialized to 0 before starting the loop. What about for the accumulating? Similar to incrementing except a variable is added to another variable instead of a constant. For example, here we have a sum or total variable. We're going to have a total sales for the whole looping. This is the value of the variable is incrementing by a variable. Total sales must be initialized to zero before starting the loop. This example will calculate the total cells according to the numbers of loop. Try to think in 5 minutes. In a basketball game during duration time, is it incrementing or decrementing or is it accumulating? For the game score, 1, 2, 3 points based on the shooting location, is it incrementing or decrementing? Or we can say it accumulating. You need to figure out this one. In this part, we're going to look again on problem analysis chart, interactivity chart, and also input process output. This is the topic that we already covered 
in the previous lesson. Did you still remember what is PAC? Was stand for problem analysis charge. In PAC, we have four sections. We are given data, required result, processing required, and also solution alternative. Please refer the previous chapter for the more in detail of PAC. This is one of example of loop structure for calculating the average age of all students in a class. We have four sections in the PAC table. Given data is the age. Required result is the average of the age. The processing we have here, the variable sum, counter, and also a looping by using do while looping. We have a solution alternative by using a constant and also input values. As you can see here, in the processing part, we have a two while statements in order to accumulate the total age of a given input. What about interactivity chart? How we can design our diagram of IC for the given problem? By using the same problem of average age, we have example of interactivity chart that looks different compared to the previous lesson. Here we have a solid round for the reading and also the solid round for the calculating. So what is happening here? So this module will request a user to key in the age by using a reading module and using the calculate to accumulate a total average of age. Once we have an interactivity chart, we can do for the input processing and output for this table. So we have a processing part by using several variables, which are sum, counter, and also the average. Try to look on the line number 4, and so line number 8. Line number 4 until line number 8, are the line that reflects to the loops. Remember that we have accumulating and incrementing. We have incrementing by using a counter, which is this counter will loop to increment by one, while the sum here is a accumulating, which is to accumulate a total edge according to the numbers of loop. We have the module reference that reflect to the IC, which is sum, counter, and the edge are the module for the read. Together with the line number 4, which is looping, we're going to read this loop. Line number 5, 6 are the calculate module because we have a calculations formula for this part. Line number 8 and also line number 9 also calculate because we're going to have to calculate and checking the age is, is not equal to zero line number nine is straightforward is a calculate calculation formula now we move on the algorithm and flowchart in looping so this part students should be able to use algorithm and flowchart in order to develop the instruction for each module in the solution of the problem, especially that reflect to the looping situation. Loop structure divided into three parts or three types, which are while, while and loops, repeat until loops, and also automatic counter loop. We're gonna see 
the differences between tree logic structure at the next section. We go for the first one, while, while, and structure. So this looping will tell the computer that while the condition is true, so repeat all instruction between the while and the while end. So normally, this type we use if we don't know the number of items or the number of loop, the instruction will be repeated. Or we can say that if there are cases when the instruction in the loop should not be processed. In this example is the flowchart for the while while end structure. As you can see here, we are using an algorithm by using a while together with the conditions. So this loop will try to check the condition first before do the instruction that inside the looping. Whatever the condition is true, it will execute all the statement in the while looping. For the flowchart, this is an example of the representation for the while loop. We have a condition in the diamond shape and while the condition is true, we will execute all the instruction inside the looping. And while it's not true, it will exit the loop. Try to give 10 minutes in this example. In this example, we develop an algorithm and flowchart that will calculate the average age of all the students in the class. So we use strip value to stop the processing of the loop. And then we test the solution with the following three edges, which are 18, 17, and 28. We have a diagram of the flowchart here for the average age. And this is, we're gonna see on the first data, the input is 18. So we have a summation equal to zero, the counter equal to one, and then we enter age, which is 18. And when we have a condition here, the statement will check either is it age is not equal to zero, if anything is not equal to zero is true, and then we do the summation. So what is happening here is sum is equal to zero plus age, current age is 18. So we have a total sum for this statement, zero plus 18 will be 18. So the counter here, since the first value for the counter is zero plus one, so we have a counter of 1. So we have another input for here, for the second input. So these are the visualization that reflects to this processing. So now we enter the second input which is 17. So the loop will repeat again for the data 17 and then we do the checking in the condition either 17 is not equal to 0. So since this one is true and then we do the summation again. Remember that the summation right now is not 0 anymore but it's 18 based on the previous loop plus the current age is 17. So now the value for the sum is updated from 18 to this total age. 18 plus 17 is equal to 35. Similar to the counter, the previous counter value is 1 and plus 1. So right now we have a counter value updated become And then we next to the enter number 
input 28 we enter 28 so this one is true again it will loop again until it will reach to the last loop so the last one we enter 0 since the age here is 0 is equal to 0 so it's false and then it will exit the loop while the program finish to calculate all the numbers until it reached to the false statement the total sum for the age is equal to 61 which come from the 17 18 17 and 28 so we have another statement is right after the loops which is here to calculate the average of the age so total sum is 61 divided into the counter which is 3 is equal to the average of the age now we move on the second type of the loop which is repeat anti-structure so this loop will tell the computer to repeat the sets of instruction between the repeat and the until until a condition is false the condition is processed at the end hence repeat until always process the instruction at this once so this loop will execute all the statement in the do while at least once before it's do the checking for the loops this is example of the flowchart for repeat anti-structure and also the algorithm as you can see here we have a do statement and a while statement for the repeat so what is happening for the do while statement here it will execute the statement first before it's due for the checking look on the flowchart we have here we have an instruction that will be execute first so before we do the checking let's say we are using the same case study in the while loops before you are developing an algorithm and flowchart that will calculate the average age of all students we are using the same age as 18, 17 and 28 you can see that there are little bit difference between the while loops for the first time of the loops we have here in the age which is before the loops and then we have the enter age inside the loop as well first of all we need to initialize the variable for the sum and also the counter and then we enter age so what has been happening here it will execute all the statement for the sum counter and enter age at least once before it's do the checking so compared to the while loop so do while the checking is at the end of the loopings so the condition will be repeated if the condition is true based on the input given in the statement can you spot differences between while and do while loops here is the example of the while loop here is the example of the do while loop or repeat until structure so in while loop we will do the checking first before it will execute all the statement inside the loop compared to the do while loop the do while will execute the statement first before it do the checking remember that we have a checking at the end so we have the input that will be reflect to the 
condition that we will implement. This is table of comparison between while and repeat loops. In while loop, the decision is processed at the beginning. The instruction in the loop will never be processed when the condition is false. What about repeat until structure? So the condition decision is processed at the end. So meaning is that the instruction in the loop are processed entirely at least one, although the condition is false. So in this case, you need to make sure that which loops that you're gonna use either while loop or do while loop. We move on the last type of loops, which is automatic counter loops. In this type, it's increase or decrease a variable each time the loops is repeated. So usually when we know from the start of the number times the loop will be executed. A variable is used as a counter that start counting at specified numbers and increase the variable each time the loop is processed. In programming, this loop we call as a for loop. How we can represent automatic counter loops for the flowchart and algorithm? We have a standard statement for the automatic counter loop for the algorithm, which is by using loop statement. Begin to end step, and we have loop end. In between, we have a normal instruction as presented in while and do while loops. We have a different shape for the automatic counter loop, which is we say have a begins, steps, and so the ends. So C is the counter, beginning a value, ending the value, and value to be incremented by counter. How we can solve the same problem for average age by using automatic counter structure? We are still using the same input, which are three ages, 18, 17, and 28. Try to look on this algorithm and the flowchart. We have a statement line number two, which is a looping, and we have a counter from one to three. So this one represents a counter starting loop number one, loop number two, and loop number three. So we know that we have three iterations in this loop, meaning that we have to key in three times to enter the age for this case. We already covered the dash checking in the previous chapter. So try to spend 10 to 15 minutes to understand dash checking. How we can evaluate the loops by using the dash checking.